Yo, what is up, guys? This is Nick of the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy mock draft. We're doing a 10 team PPR draft on Sleeper app. So, but before I start the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please click the subscribe button, click the notification bell to get notified for every single video I come out with. I'm coming out with a video every single day, and you'll be seeing double uploads, triple uploads, quadruple uploads on certain days. The, uh, the subscribe button's also over here. Leave a like and also leave a comment about something in the video or dislike the video if you don't enjoy it. And let's get into the video. So we're doing a 10-team PPR draft on Sleeper App, as I said. And the roster position goes as follow. We got one quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, a tight end, flex, kicker, defense, and six bench spots. So we're going to get right into this. We're going to be going from the one slot today because I haven't done the one in a while. And we're going to get right into the draft right now, begin the draft. So it's the first pick. And with the first pick, you're usually going to see one of these four guys. You're going to say Saquon, Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Chris McCaffrey, or Ezekiel Elliott. Normally, I would go Saquon, Barkley, or Ezekiel Elliott at the one. Those are kind of the two toss-ups at the one. I think if you're going Kamara or CMC, you're kind of reaching there, even though I have seen it. But Saquon Barkley, to me, is the number one, the 101, the guy you should be picking if you have the first pick. I made a video about it a while ago. You can go watch it on my channel. But Saquon Barkley here is the pick due to his... His catching ability, his running ability, and the fact that if he proved that even when Odell was out, he can put up those solid numbers that you want on your fantasy team. So we're going to go Saquon here. You don't need much explaining for such a great running back that you saw last year. So we're going to go Saquon Barkley. After we pick Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Alvin Kamara, David Johnson, Christian McCaffrey follow. So David Johnson was picked before... Um, Christian McCaffrey, you don't really see Saquon, Zeke, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey go in the top four. So after McCaffrey, Melvin Gordon was picked, followed by DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, James Conner, Le'Veon Bell, Julio Jones, Joe Mixon, Todd Gurley, Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb, Odo Beckham Jr. So now it's our pick. But before I select our guy, I want to talk about how Todd Gurley was picked. Do not pick Todd Gurley in the first two rounds. First three rounds, first four rounds, because of his injury, you don't want to deal. You don't want to pick someone who's injury prone in the first couple of rounds. You want to try to stay safe. And going, if you're trying to pick safely, I would not pick some guy who has arthritis of the knee. So it's our pick, and this pick is pretty obvious because the best tight end fell to us, Travis Kelsey. Now, in a ten-team league, having a good tight end, having the one, the best tight end in the league and in fantasy Travis Kelsey is so important because of the positional advantage he gives you he is so much better than every other tight end that every single week you know that your tight end is most likely going to be the best and you're going to totally destroy your matchup in that position and in small leagues like a 10 team league your running backs are all going to be pretty good your receivers are all going to be good your quarterbacks are all going to be pretty good your flexes are all going to be pretty good but the Advantage comes here at tight end. So that's why we go Travis Kelsey here. After we go Travis Kelsey, it is our pick again. So we're probably going to be going running back or receiver here. The running backs we're looking at are Damian Williams, Leonard Fournette, Aaron Jones. Those kind of guys. And the receivers are Mike Evans, Adam Thielen, Keenan Allen. But... I think that getting two running backs in the first three rounds is a lot better than having one tight end, one running back, and one receiver. If we went two running backs at the beginning, that would be more likely to go receiver here, but we did not do that, so we're looking at the running back position. So Damian Williams fell to us. Now, Damian Williams is a guy who not a lot of people necessarily like. They don't necessarily love this guy because he only played a few games at the end of the season, right? Didn't really do anything. And then after Kareem Hunt got absolutely, absolutely kicked that lady, he got in 19, 30, 25, 12. Don't count week 17, so 19, 30, and 25 fantasy points. So that's pretty good. And they see that, oh, in college, he wasn't really the bell cow. Oh, he's never been the bell cow when he was in Miami. Wah, wah, wah. I think he can do it. Damian Williams the pick here. After Damian Williams, Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen, Mike Evans, Zach Ertz, T.Y. Hilton, Leonard Fournette, Aaron Jones, Amari Cooper, Patrick Mahomes, Marilyn Mack, Devontae Freeman, Josh Jacobs, Carrion Johnson, George Kittle, Stefan Diggs, A.J. Green, Julian Edelman, and Tyreek Hill have all been picked. So in the first 
four rounds, the three big tight ends have went as per usual. You're going to be seeing that in pretty much every single draft. Kelsey, Ertz, or Kittle go in the first four rounds in drafts I've seen before. Travis Kelsey, Ertz, and Kittle go in the first three rounds, so that's entirely possible. Patrick Mahomes usually falls into the third round is where he's normally picked, but I would not pick Mahomes in the first four rounds. Probably I'm not really someone who drafts quarterback highly, but don't expect in your league that Mahomes could even fly off the board in the first round or the second round. Don't don't be too surprised if that happens. Even though I personally wouldn't do it, you will be seeing that happen. So it is our pick, and we have our two running backs. We got Saquon Barkley, Damian Williams, and we have his teammate, Damian Williams' teammate, and our tight end, Travis Kelsey. So it is our pick, and we are going to probably be going running back receiver here. So we get our running back flex and even switch them out if we do not need them. So that we can get a running back here that we will probably want to start. And at this point, we are going to go receiver first and then go over the running backs. Because I think it's easier to make the receiver pick here. We have Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Kenny Galladay, Calvin Ridley, Cooper Cup, Tyler Lockett. Guys that we'd be looking at here. And I am not looking at Cooper Cup, obviously, due to his injury. I said that in every single video. Click subscribe at the bottom so you can get no, get all the videos. But I say that in every video because of his injury. I don't trust him to come. I don't even know if he'll be safe or back week one to actually play. And if he rushes back, there's more likely to get a re-injury, as you know. Obviously, he could have a year like how AP came back and absolutely tore it up. That's obviously possible with any player who gets injured. But I, that is unlikely in my opinion so I would much rather go one of his two teammates Brandon Cooks or Robert Woods and I like Brandon Cooks slightly less than Robert Woods so we would be going Robert Woods here due to the fact that I think he is more safe and he does get more catches each game and that's obviously better in PPR so we are going to go Robert Woods after Robert Woods we are probably actually just going to go receiver even though I because I don't really like Derrick Henry that much Due to the fact that I his season from last year in 2018 tells two completely different stories. The first half of the season shows that he absolutely sucked. That was not a guy you wanted to start. Four points, five points, five points, five points, three points. 14 is pretty good. 11, 17 is pretty good. But at the end of the season, one, two, week 14, 15, and 16, and even 13 are startable weeks. But those boosted him so much. A 47-point week and a 30-point week boosted him so much to where his numbers actually look good. But if you look at a game-by-game -game basis, you are not going to want to draft that guy. I have drafted him before in the box on high upside. He definitely has that because he showed that he could put up a 45-point game for you, a 47-point game for you. But you do not want that week in and week out. So we are just going to go receiver here and then go for a guy like Chris Carson in the sixth round. So we're going to go receiver here and not even regret it. Since we already got Brandon Cooks, I, or since we already got Robert Woods, I would not go Brandon Cooks. I don't want two receivers on the same team. Usually I don't go with that. A running back and a tight end, completely different story. A quarterback and a receiver, completely different story. But having a running back or two receivers on the same team is not ideal. So in my opinion, the second best guy out here is Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay is a guy who's going to be the number one on Detroit. While I can see his numbers looking similar to Marvin Jones at the end of the season, I think Kenny Galladay has proved that he is a great player. Even though I believe he was a rookie last year. Yeah, this is his second year in the league. He put up solid numbers each week. And when Matt Stafford is healthy, I think... Matt Stafford was not healthy at the end of the last season. I think that he'll be a solid option week in and week out to have Kenny Galladay. So we're going to lock him in. After we go Kenny Galladay, Brandon Cooks comes off the board, followed by Mark Ingram, Derek Henry, Kenyon Drake, David Montgomery, Philip Lindsay, Chris Carson, Tyler Lockett. So Chris Carson has gone in a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 running back run, followed by Tyler Lockett, Mike Williams, Calvin Ridley, Andrew Luck, Cooper Cup, Sony Michelle, Deshaun Watson, Chris Godwin, Tyreek Cohen, Hunter Henry, Tevin Coleman. So it's our pick. And... We are most likely just going to go receiver again here. Even though I like hammering them running backs, I don't see the real value here at going to running back in this spot. Probably the next round, obviously, but it, which is a swing pick. Sorry, I just burped. Hopefully that didn't come through on the mic. But we want to go receiver here. 
and I do like DJ Moore a lot, a lot, but I do want to go with Tyler Boyd here because I think that he could finish better than DJ Moore because I am worried about uh, Carson, not Carson once, Cam Newton, who is DJ Moore's quarterback, his health. I don't know how good his shoulder actually is. I really regret picking him in some of the drafts I've picked him in so far. Even though they're mocks, they obviously don't count. I don't think that I really trust him that much to go with him into a real season of fantasy football. Once we know in August how good he actually is based on preseason tape, I don't really know if I want to take that risk on DJ Moore where I see Tyler Boyd, obviously the quarterback of Andy Dalton, not the greatest guy. Not terrible though. So we are going to go be going Tyler Boyd here. And he did, I think, play better when A.J. Green was on the field rather than when A.J. Green was hurt. But I, we, as we know, A.J. Green's probably going to get hurt anyway, so we are going to have to deal with that. So we're going to go Tyler Boyd here. After we go Tyler Boyd, it is our pick again. And we are probably going to just be loading up running backs here. Now, let me explain to you something. James White is a guy, he's probably the, he's the guy I like the most out of these guys. Not because he's good at running, but because he's good at catching. He is just he's pretty much a receiver that is in the running back position and he's not good in standard i wouldn't even in half ppr i'm more scared to take him but in full ppr he gets those solid receptions he's getting like five six targets a game and he also does get a few rushes so he is gonna rush in a bit so i am pretty good getting james i'm pretty confident getting james white to be a bench player i'm not very confident in having him be a guy you're starting week in and week out but in a PPR league, he does have some solid value, and definitely not in standard. So if you're in a standard league, don't draft James White. Let me tell you that right now. But we are going to be going James White here with our seventh round selection. So after we select James White, O.J. Howard, Russell Wilson, Jarvis Landry, Aaron Rodgers, Darius Geis, Robbie Anderson, Evan Ingram, D.J. Moore, Darrell Henderson, Lamar Miller, Alshon Jeffrey, Baker Mayfield, Eric Ebron, Sammy Watkins, Christian Kirk, Will Fuller, Drew Brees come off the board. So at this point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight quarterbacks have came off the board before we get to pick. So if we were to, if we don't pick one of these guys now, like Carson Wentz or Kyler Murray, we would be waiting. And I think that's probably what we're going to do, but we are going to be picking our running back here because when you go with three receivers at the beginning that I think are solid, you don't really have to draft receivers until later. In my opinion, I like to stash all them good running backs. Also, you can, if you have a shit ton of good running backs, you can trade them, obviously, during the season. And, uh, yeah, but it's our pick, and we're going to go with, this is pretty obvious to me to go Rashad Penny here. Rashad Penny is a guy who I think is going to get a shit ton of touches on a run-heavy team. He could end up becoming the one over Chris Carson. While I don't know how likely that is, we will see it during camp. He may even shoot up the draft board if Carson ends up going down. If Carson ends up going down, he's going to be a top 12 running back, in my opinion. So we will be going with Penny here and feeling pretty confident about it on such a run-heavy Seahawks team. After we go Rashad Penny, I don't think we're going to be going quarterback here because I would rather just wait and get a quarterback than reach on a quarterback here. At the receiver position, like I said, we already have one, two, three receivers, and we have four running backs, so we want to get more running backs because the later you get in the draft, the more less likely that a running back you're going to get is actually even startable. So we are going to go with Latavius Murray here. Now, I could go Miles Sanders here because Miles Sanders is a guy who could end up a few weeks into the season being the number one there but they do go running back by committee on the Eagles so it is unlikely that he will be the only one he, like that who will end up becoming a workhorse back on the team but he did show in college that he was a great runner so it would not surprise me if a few weeks into the season he took the running back here he took the RB1 position now if you are in a if you did not go running back at the beginning. So say you went four receivers at the beginning or three receivers at the beginning and a tight end, you can't be drafting Miles Sanders because you can't trust him for the first few weeks if he's like your running back too. But in a situation where he's our fifth running back, I do see the upside in picking him, but I would much rather pick a guy like Latavius Murray, who I know I could start every single week. And I know for a fact that if, uh, if Alvin Kamara was to go down, that Latavius Murray could be a top 12 back. He showed uh, in Minnesota that he was pretty good. He also showed on the Raiders that he was pretty good a few years ago. So we do know that he could do that. So we are going to go Latavius Murray here. 
Every goal, Latavius Murray, Kareem Hunt is selected, followed by Dante Pettis, Sterling Shepard, Miles Sanders, Ronald Jones, the yoked one, Carson Wentz, Allen Robinson, Vance McDonald, David Njoku, Sean McCoy, Jordan Howard, followed by Larry Fitz, Royce Freeman, Marvin Jones, Bears defense, Jared Cook, DK Metcalf, Nikhil Harry. Now, nothing here very subject or suspect, I should say, except for the Bears defense. Don't pick a, bear, a defense that early. Now, I would pick the Bears in situations where I wasn't comfortable streaming. So if you're not comfortable streaming, reaching for the Bears, I guess, is okay. But reaching for a defense like the Rams, the Chargers, any other defense, don't reach for them because they're not going to put up the points that the Bears could potentially put up. So it's our pick. We have one, two, three, four, five running backs, and we only have three receivers. We got our tight end. So when you draft a guy like Travis Kelsey, you don't need a backup tight end. Just say no. And we will probably just go receiver quarterback here because one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine teams already have quarterback. So we'd be the last guy to pick quarterback. So we've got to pick our quarterback here since it's a ten-team league. So we're gonna go receiver and then tight, or and then quarterback. Probably just quarterback then receiver. So I can actually explain the receiver position. So we are gonna go with quarterback here, and Kyler Murray is probably the guy you're gonna be looking at here. Kyler Murray or Jameis Winston probably have the highest upside. Now, if we do draft Kyler Murray, I am more likely to draft a backup quarterback because I don't necessarily know if I'm ready to. Week one against whatever team they're playing, throw him out there. I am kind of nervous, but I at the same time, I think he just has big playability. He, he proved it at Oklahoma that he was the quarterback there. He was a Heisman winning guy. He's a great quarterback, has the legs, and as you know, in fantasy, a guy who can run is a straight cheat code at the quarterback. Lamar Jackson is pretty much a fucking running back, and he was winning get you games starting in the quarterback position. So we are going to go Kyler Murray here. And hope that the Cardinals turn it around this year. So with our second pick on the turn. Actually our 11th round pick. But the second pick in the turn. We're going to be going with someone who I like. So we don't want Geronimo Allison. Because while I do think he may end up being the 2 on Green Bay. I have been seeing reports that's more likely that MVS could be that guy. We're going to know once August comes around and they're doing preseason. Who's actually the two on the team behind Devonte Adams? Is it Geronimo Allison? Is it Marquez Valdez Scantling? But right now, we do not have much of a clue, except for the fact that I think it's going to be Marquez Valdez Scantling. So, if we do not pick Marquez Valdez Scantling right here, we are not going to get him back. But let me explain why I didn't. Actually, I think we're going to go D.D. Westbrook here. But uh, the reason why I'm not going for Corey Davis is because. As you know, this dude is, if you've watched my videos, subscribe down below so you can get all the videos. Click the notification bell so you get notified. Click the like button if you enjoyed and leave a fucking comment. Say, fuck Corey Davis. That's what you should say. Corey Davis sucks. He's getting like 30% of the passes on the team are going towards him last year. And he's a sorry ass receiver like Michael Crabtree. Did nothing with it. One week, two weeks over 20 points. One week, 31 points. The other weeks, he left you doing nothing. It's like Darrell Revis was fucking guarding him or something. He was doing nothing. So you don't want him. Golden Tate, don't want him either. I don't see why he's even picked so highly. The Giants fucking suck ass. Besides Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard, and Evan Ingram, you don't want any of those fucking guys that are on the team. But you know who you do want? D.D. Westbrook, who could end up being the number one guy. Nick Foles is number one target. And as you know, Nick Foles is is a certified god. He's a Super Bowl winner, and he can really turn the Jacksonville team around. Even though, obviously, I thought Blake Bortles was a better quarterback than everyone else did, but obviously he's not great, and D.D. Westbrook did pretty great, even with Blake Bortles putting up some solid weeks, and I think that if Nick Foles targets him a lot, he could end up being a solid guy to throw into your flex. So I'm going to go with um, D.D. Westbrook here. After we go D.D. Westbrook, Golden Tate is selected, followed by Geronimo Allison, Corey Davis, Dante Foreman, Cam Newton, Kiki Cootie, Jalen Samuels, Carlos Hyde, Jared Goff, Cortland Sutton, Austin Eckler, Jared McKinnon, L.A. Defense, Ito Smith, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, Jameis Winston, Phillip Rivers, Jacksonville Defense. So we won't get the receiver we wanted here. We won't be able to get MVS, but we do currently have 1-2. Three, four, five running backs, and four receivers. And as I always say, you need to have more 
uh, running backs than receivers on your lineup because running you can always pretty much pick up a receiver that you can start in your flex. Unless you're in like a 14-team league, then it's a lot harder. But in a 10-team league, it's pretty easy. But you're not going to be able to find a running back that you can start week in and week out on the waiver wire unless someone was to go down and you were to pick up their backup. Like if Dalvin Cook went down, you could pick up Alexander Madison. Stuff like that. So we are going to be going with a guy picking every single draft. And if you've subscribed to the channel, you may have heard some stuff about, and that is Peyton Barber. Now, Peyton Barber, not a sexy pick, but he could be end up being the number one on Tampa Bay, and that obviously comes with being the number one running back on a team, comes with just getting all them touches and being someone who you can rely upon if Saquon or Damian Williams gets hurt. Like, he's not a guy I'm going to be starting, obviously. He just rides the bench. He rides the pine. But if he is eventually needed or called upon, he's a guy that you have that could be the number one on Tampa Bay, and that's just solid upside. Other guys I would be looking at here, I would consider Matt Burita could end up being the one on San Francisco. Another guy I would look at, uh, Alexander Madison, is a guy who could end up being the one in Minnesota if Dalvin Cook was to go down, but we are going to be going Peyton Barber here. I have to go Peyton Barber is our pick again. And since I said that when you go Kyler Murray, you may want to draft a backup quarterback, that is exactly, 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 exactly what we are going to do here. And we have by 12 on Kyler Murray. So don't draft your backup quarterback to have the same buy as your starter. That's just in. That's not a good idea. So we're going to go with another guy who I think has high upside in Dickie Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is a guy who has the floor. He's going to be getting six rushing touchdowns. He's gotten six rushing touchdowns three years in a row. I think he can do it again. And the, obviously rushing is good for your quarterback. He's also put up some solid passing yards last season. And I think with the addition of Amari Cooper from last season, definitely helped him. Gave him some sol- gave him a solid receiver to target. And I do like Dak Prescott in fantasy this year. There's a video on my channel you can check out about Dak Prescott going in about his stats. Uh, where to draft him and why he's a sleeper on my channel. You can go find that. But we're going to select Dak Prescott here. After we go Dak Prescott, Damian Harris is selected, followed by the Chargers, me, Cole, hard man, Tom Brady, Austin Hooper, TJ Hawkinson, Dante Moncrief, Jimmy Guap, Emmanuel Sanders, and then defenses. I'm not going to read the defenses. I'll only read actual players. And here's where I will explain to you how to pick a defense. So, when you're picking a defense, it's August, it's your draft, and you're sitting there, you're like, damn, I don't have the Bears, which defense should I pick? Let me look at the rankings for the whole season. No, don't look at those rankings. Use the rankings that I will tell you, which is by look going to the NFL schedule, typing in NFL Week 1 schedule, printing that shit out, and being like, which defense is playing a sorry-ass offense, an offense that's going to throw picks, an offense that's going to get sacked, and you pick that defense based upon who is an easy offensive matchup, so we are going to go with... Denver Broncos defense here because they're the highest ranked one that I didn't do that research yet. After we go Broncos defense, it is now turn to pick a kicker. And the way you pick a kicker is you find someone who does rankings on kicker and pick them based upon that. And we're just going to go with Stefan Gustowski because I know he's good. After Gustowski, Alexander Madison goes followed by Devin Singletary, kicker, and then Curtis Samuel, kicker, and then Ben Roethlisberger, and then three kickers. So I'm going to go recap the team real quick. Our quarterback is Kyler Murray. Two running backs are Saquon and Damian Williams. Our two receivers are Robert Robert Woods, Kenny Galladay. Tight end is Travis Kelsey. Our flex is Tyler Boyd. Kicker defense don't matter. Our bench is James White, Rashad Penny, Latavius Murray, D.D. Westbrook, Peyton Barber, and Dak Prescott. So thank you guys all for watching. I hope that you guys had a great day on Saturday. Hope you guys had a great 4th of July, and I'll see you guys tomorrow on Sunday. Goodbye. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Please do all those things. Goodbye, guys.